a while ago, too long ago, I made a video about the para-elemental planes, which is part of the cosmology of Dungeons and Dragons, and they're odd places where the elemental planes mix, the area where they brush up against one another. So fire and earth create the plane of magma, etc. But there's also quasi-elemental planes, and these planes are where the base elemental plane brushes up with either the positive energy plane or the negative energy plane. Hello everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent. Welcome to another video diving into the cosmology of Dungeons and Dragons. Now the quasi-elemental planes are essentially the same idea as the para-elemental planes, except they're on a more vertical axis uh, instead of a circular axis. Axes? These are where the four elemental planes intersect with either the positive energy plane or the negative energy plane. Very little is really able to survive in these planes. The four para-elemental planes are rough for living in, but the eight quasi-elemental planes are extremely harsh. The positive energy plane itself is an overwhelming abundance of energy, and the negative energy plane is the opposite, the void of all energy. It saps everything out. You're either burned up alive in the positive, or you're scattered into nothingness in the negative. Now, the planes exist outside of our four dimensions, which makes it difficult to explain or really comprehend. How do infinite planes have an edge where they meet up with yet another infinite plane? But to put it simply, if we look at the Great Wheel and we have the positive energy plane on top and the negative energy plane on the bottom, each of the four planes, the four elemental planes, will mix with the positive and the negative. And this gives us the eight quasi-elemental planes. There is a mysterious tower set in each of the positive aligned quasi-elemental planes, and there is a corresponding citadel in each of the negative aligned quasi-elemental planes. So starting off, the quasi-elemental plane of radiance. This sits between the plane of fire and the positive energy plane. It is an extremely bright and hot place, and those that open a portal to this area have a chance of going blind temporarily from the overwhelming light. There is no solid ground, and you'll need plenty of magical protection to navigate within this plane. Now, probably the main reason people might travel to the Plane of Radiance is to find the legendary Heart of Light. Closer towards the positive energy side of this plane, there exists a mythical tower of blue light that is said to heal all injuries and wounds at an almost instantaneous rate. There is one other known location here called the Kingdom of the Blind, a city that is shielded by reflective crystals, which makes it very difficult to find. It is ruled by a tiefling whose mind was implanted into a clay golem. Nilinar Basconel is the name of the tiefling, and if you can find the kingdom, well, you'll be able to replenish your supplies and rest a bit while on the Plane of Radiance. In the Spelljammer version of the Forgotten Realms, the stars that you see in the night sky are actually portals to the Plane of Radiance. They're dotted along the inside of the crystal shell that holds realm space. Now, that's 2E version of Spelljammer and the realms. The 5E version of Spelljammer that came out in 2022 did not include crystal spheres, so there are no Plane of Radiance portals. Um, it's odd considering that the stars in the night sky are just small portals, but I, th I think it could be a fun way to plan or travel in your Spelljammer campaign. Now, an article in Dragon Magazine 321 from 2004, it reworked the Plane of Radiance into a beautiful and livable plane. A rainbow bridge connecting floating islands of earth and crystal. Deities like Paylor and Lathander, they would align with this plane and have a presence here which includes also a race of elven-looking people called Glimmerfolk. Now, your plane of radiance may differ, but personally, I like the idea of a bright, hostile environment, and outside of that particular article, I couldn't find any other mentions of this new plane of radiance. So up next is the quasi-elemental plane of lightning. This is the plane of air rubbing up against the positive energy plane, and it creates massive amounts of energy that sparks out as lightning. It behaves much like the plane of air, but instead of blue skies, we have dark clouds full of ball lightning. Thunder can be heard often as lightning jumps from cloud to cloud, and if you're here, there's a 10% chance that you'll attract a lightning bolt while exploring the plane but you can easily avoid the damage with um, magical protections. Now, the smell of ozone is very heavy in the air, giving it a metallic taste, and you might find lightning methods here, 
and sometimes blue dragons like to fly around this realm. One mysterious location, another tower, is the Tower of Storms. Made of an unknown material, it projects out of the positive energy plane and into the plane of lightning. It's electric blue in color and has no visible entrances. It's simply a large, mysterious tower that many believe houses something or someone inside. Is it a prison, a refuge, a home? Nobody knows. The quasi-elemental plane of mineral. This is a rocky place full of gems and metal. The plane of positive energy forces energy into the plane of earth to create beautiful crystals, gems, precious metals, and more. It is also known as the treasure trove of the multiverse. Now, much like the plane of earth, the plane of mineral is solid, making travel very difficult, and there is little to no air, which means most created tunnels require a clever way to circulate fresh air. There are monstrous creatures here, but a larger hazard is fossilization. See, each day you spend in the plane of mineral, you slowly petrify. Each 24-hour period, a saving throw versus petrification must be made, and if you fail too many times, you'll become the minerals that you're looking to harvest. Interesting spots within the plane of mineral is the Tower of Lead, a large gray tower that has the best forges ever created a mystery to who created it, and there are tools inside that nobody seems to know how to use. The Blamps rub against the Chumbles. People who spend too many days in the Tower of Lead disappear unexplainably. Perhaps they're pulled into the plane of positive energy or something far worse. The quasi-elemental plane of steam. Now you'd think that this would be the perfect place to build a sauna, but the air isn't necessarily hot. It's a more, a more accurate name would be the quasi-elemental plane of water vapor. The closer the plane of water gets to the positive energy plane, the more the water droplets break apart until a dense fog comes about. Visibility is low, and you might have trouble breathing with so much moisture in the air. It's a gentle world, though, with balloon-like jellyfish creatures that inhale and exhale steam to move about. And there is a major city here called Adrift, which is a very clever name, and I love it. Now, the city consists of a spinning ring, and in the center, there are broken statues of giants. The statue pieces are large enough that you would recognize a face, a torso, hands, but they're all fragmented. Much like the other quasi-realms, there is another location very close to the plane of positive energy known as the Tower of Ice. A large tower made of ice, Inside are laboratories to make potions, poisons, and other magical substances. It is a well-guarded secret on how to gain access, and even I don't know. Now we shift away from the positive energy side and we focus on the four negative quasi-elemental planes. The positive energy plane pushes energy into the nearby planes. The negative energy plane, well, it takes energy away. So first up is the Plane of Ash, where the Plane of Fire and the Negative Energy Plane meet. The Plane has a densely packed hard soil. The Negative Energy Plane is actually removing the heat from the Plane of Fire, which condenses it into cold cinders or ash. The Plane of Ash takes warmth away from everything, including living creatures and magical sources of heat. It is known to some as Empty Winter. Even creatures immune to cold are affected by this plane, slowly losing energy. The ash can absorb magical energies cast by creatures, which nullifies their spells. Now within the plane of ash is a nomadic army of ghouls and ghasts known as the Flesh Renders. They are commanded by Vecna, who plays a pretty important part on this plane. See, Vecna migrated to the quasi-plane of ash an unknown amount of time ago. He drove off the Doom Guards, which is a Sigil faction who had created a fortress in the Plane of Ash, a skull-shaped citadel known as Cavidius. Now, taking this new fortress, he researched dark magic. But in a turn of events, Cavidius, Vecna, and all of his followers within vanished from the Plane of Ash. The dark powers of Ravenloft migrated the entire structure to the Domains of Dread. And I've done a whole video on that in the top right corner or in the description below. Now, the other notable point of interest is the Citadel of Former Flame. It's a structure carved from the ash of the plane, and it's magically fused together. Ruled by an elemental named Gazra, they use undead guardians as soldiers around the Citadel. 
Next is the quasi-elemental plane of dust, the plane of earth brushed up against the negative energy plane. This is an open, empty plane with howling winds that carry stinging, fragmented particulates. Everything in this plane is eroded away until it's just small, minute particles. There is little to no atmosphere here. You'll need magical aid to be able to breathe, and flames won't burn, and vision is limited. Now, occasionally, dust particulates collide and stick to one another. Now, this happens more and more until long strands are created. And from these strands, these structures, you get kind of a cobwebby effect. These webs are very sturdy, and they're held together with negative energy. There are no spiders here in the plane of dust, but your players don't need to know that. I mean, but seriously, that image, like, what a creepy place to explore. The Doom Guard created yet another citadel here. It is called Citadel Alluvius, and it's placed very close to the elemental plane of Earth, and it is protected by a strong wall of force spell. It boasts a pretty large population, with merchants arriving to collect particles of dust for various spells. Dust of disappearance, dust of sleep. I can only imagine collecting and refining the correct dust particulate is a, a very time-intensive process. Now, the quasi-elemental plane of vacuum sits between the plane of air and the negative energy plane, a curious place that lacks light, air, water, and heat. It is a simple place and just really empty. No one seeks the quasi-plane of vacuum. There's nothing there to provide a reason. Spells that provide air and breath don't seem to work here. Any magic that draws on the element of air or wind, it just won't function. In a way, you can survive here basically as long as you can hold your breath. If a creature has wings, they will not function. They just won't work. But you can move about by choosing a down direction and you will start falling in that direction. Now you can conjure a light source, but with nothing for the light to bounce off of, the plane will remain mostly dark. Construct creatures and articulated mechanisms that enter the plane of vacuum become vacuum welded. Not unlike cold welding in space, objects eventually freeze up and they are no longer able to move. There is a strange fungus that grows here. The agaris fungus seems to thrive on nothingness itself. It actually reacts poorly to material objects and creatures, and there's a whole monster stat block for this in one of the extra supplements for Planescape. There are certain undead creatures that like to live at the junction of the negative energy plane um, to the plane of vacuum, and they'll spend time in the quasi-elemental plane of vacuum and kind of dip in and dip back. Now, despite all of this, there are two creatures who make their home here. One is Sunsing, and Sunsing is a creature that lives in a negative energy pocket within the plane of vacuum. No one truly knows what this creature is, but there is a group of undead that claim to be agents of Sunsing. The next inhabitant is Zal the Destroyer, which is a giant beholder who has somehow adapted to life in the quasi-plane of vacuum. From his tumbling ice fortress, he commands an army of quasi-elementals. Forces in Sigil keep a very close watch on Zal the Destroyer's movements, because if he ever decided to leave or attack, they're not sure how they'd ever stop him. The Doomguard have yet another citadel here called Citadel Exhalus, also known as the Portal of the Last Breath. With a close connection to the plane of negative energy, creatures arrive here to look at, observe, and study the plane of negative energy in a somewhat slightly safer location. The last quasi-elemental plane we're going to talk about is the plane of salt, a combination of the plane of water and negative energy. Now, a great many threats live within this plane, but the plane itself is the big one. It actually pulls fluids from a creature's body. Now, I originally envisioned this as like a, a brackish salt water, but it's actually a solid mass of salt. You'll need to mine your way through this area to traverse it. Now, within the quasi-plane of salt, there are veins of crystal which look like spun glass. These crystals act like knives. They're extremely sharp and durable, and they can cut travelers as you go through the plane of salt, sometimes severing off whole limbs. Ow! Tor Selenius is a gigantic brine dragon that lives here within the quasi plane of salt. He seems to be immune to the dehydration effect of the plane, and he wishes to be the only living creature within the plane of salt. 
He hates the living and the undead, and he attacks when triggered. Note, there are lots of methods and other creatures that live here, so Tor Selenius the Brine Dragon has a bit of work to get rid of all of the creatures within the Quasi Plane of Salt. Again, the Doom Guard created a citadel here. This is known as the Citadel of Sialt, which is carved from the plane itself, and it appears as a giant sculpture. Everything within is carved from the salt. There are no bricks or other components. It is supposedly a beautiful piece of architecture and art. And that's all for the quasi-elemental planes. Do you have a favorite? Will your party be exploring any towers or citadels soon? Do you want to know more about the Doom Guards? Well, you can find all of the information uh, about the planes in the Inner Plane Supplement from 2nd Edition. Links down below. And if you're curious, I've got other videos on Planescape, including videos on the Doom Guard. Now, if you like D&D lore and you're curious about various campaign settings in your fantasy tabletop role-playing game, then please subscribe. I have plenty of playlists that should keep you entertained for a while. Thanks again for watching, everyone, and I will see you all.